Hi, I'm Frank Crenshaw. This is Frank's Plastic Modeling Page. Welcome back. Um, I'm going to do a little update on my Edward P51 and talk a little bit about a new tool that I've I just got and uh, how those two work together. First things first, though, I did uh, receive my my one or one thirty seconds of an inch decal stripes from Microscale. They showed up and they're the perfect size. I'm very happy with those. Now I do like to paint on the markings. But those little decals right there, they're just so easy to apply, and they, they look just perfect. They're perfectly straight, no nothing sloppy about them. They're covered in parafilm because I'm doing a little bit of work, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But uh, the decal stripes are a hit, so now it's just a matter of finishing off the kit. However, I did suffer somewhat of a major setback, and that's what you're looking at right here. Um, this part of the rudder, just re to the rear of where I'm circling, pushed in. Um, it literally fractured along this back end and pushed into the kit. And I don't know why it did that. I mean, I just picked it up or something. I I mean, I, I'm, I don't handle this thing roughly or I, I haven't put any clamps on it or anything. And uh, my speculation is, is that this is a fairly innovative molded part by Edward. It's actually a solid piece rudder and it's hollow. So there's no uh, sink marks in it. I think that this back edge is where the uh, mold piece pulled out and it's it's left a very thin layer of plastic right here and for some reason just in the handling making these masking stripes that I made um, it gave out and, and collapsed anyway I pulled it out with a piece of tape I've glued it back in and uh, hopefully it will hold I think we're okay but only time will tell. If it fails, I'm going to have to order a new part and do the rudder over again. I hope that doesn't happen because I'm so close to being done that uh, that I'm really, I really just want to finish this model and move on. But uh, if you're building this kit, if, if you own this kit, I highly recommend you reinforce the inside of this rudder in some fashion, some way, shape, or form. Now, mine broke on the uh, left side, so I'm going to assume that that that's the weak side on all of them so I don't know if you want to stick a piece of sprue down there and glue it or fill it with epoxy I wouldn't recommend putting glue down here though because it's so thin that the glue might very well distort the actual rudder um, I, I would do something like use epoxy epoxy perhaps epoxy putty um, just something that you can put in here that will give some support to this internal piece um, a, a thin CA that you you know let dry. I wouldn't put too much CA in though because as CA dries it can generate a lot of heat and that of course would could create problems of its own. So if you do use CA do it gently but I it's probably not a bad idea to reinforce this particular part of the kit because I, I didn't do anything to break that. I mean I'm not doing anything that, that should cause that. So to fix it I've added some uh, I've done some gluing and I've added a little bit of putty and we're about to sand that. And the reason I'm making this video is I want to talk a little bit about how I'm going to do that. Sanding this model will be challenging. However, I recently picked up a tool that I'm pretty excited about and I thought I would share, uh, share this tool with you. This tool is the uh, Infinity Sanding Sticks. Um, they're made of stainless steel and they're of a of a gauge that they're actually pretty thick and very durable. I'm very, I wasn't sure what they were when I ordered them. Um, however, they're so popular that the only thing I could order was these sticks. Infinity also sells some sanding paper, but their sanding paper was uh, out of stock. Um, like immediately after after it showed up in stock at Sprue Brothers. So uh, anyway, I, I did manage to get a hold of uh, some of the sanding sticks though. And uh, they are pretty cool. If you look at this, look at how sharp and pointed that is. I mean, this 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 is very useful for sanding, right where I'm going to need to be sanding. This is this is perfect. I'm I'm really excited to try this tool. It comes with different sizes too. Here's a a, a three millimeter square one. This is another version of this triangle. You know, a five millimeter one. So you have a lot of different choices. The problem is, is I don't have a lot of sandpaper. I did, I did get a sheet of uh, Infinity sandpaper, but it's like 3,000 grit. So that's great for polishing things, but it's not really good for doing the dirty work. 
And so for the dirty work, I need something like this 800 grit paper. And this 800 grit paper is great, but it doesn't have any sticky on it. So how do you, how do you deal with that? Well, that's what I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So how do I make this, this, uh, this infinity stick work with this 3M standard paper that I have tons of, um, when I can't get the infinity sanding paper and I have no idea when it's going to show up and the stuff is expensive. Well, the answer is pretty simple. And there's probably a lot of different ways to do this. But the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use contact cement. Just standard old DAP contact cement that you can get from Home Depot, Lowe's, maybe even Walmart. But anyway, this stuff is really good. It, it, it's amazing, actually. The problem with it is when you first buy it in, out of the bottle, it's very sticky. It's, it's runny. It's, it's just very thick. Not ideal at all for uh, modeling purposes. In fact, you would probably be scared to stick that on your model and you're right to do so because, you know, that's just too goopy. So what I've done is I've taken some of that contact cement and I've actually placed it in this uh, bottle cap. And then I went ahead and I added the secret ingredient, which may not be a secret to all of you, but to some of you. I just used some of the xylene, which again is just something you can pick up from Home Depot. Now xylene is uh, really useful for thinning things like epoxy and, uh, and also this contact cement. Now I used to use it a lot before the days of the, uh, the light sensitive glue like Bondic. If you take this xylene and you thin 5 minute epoxy, or 30 minute epoxy or just epoxy, you can thin it into a brushable medium, like a, a very runny medium that will dry. It's just that it dries in a very thin layer. Um, it's ideal for uh, doing things like making instrument panel um, glass faces. So, so you would just, you wouldn't use contact cement for that. You would use epoxy and, uh, you know, just put a drop of that epoxy on the instrument face, and it makes a perfect glass. And it, and it works really easy. It's very consistent. It's, it's, in fact, one of my favorite tricks. But in this case, I'm going to use it to actually stick this thing to the stainless steel. Now, contact cement in and of itself is pretty strong. And so once this paper's on this stainless steel thing, it's going to be hard to get off. But since it's stainless steel... I mean, I'm going to have no trouble scraping the old paper off this and just doing this over and over and over. Also, if I have any excess contact cement on this that I want to remove, I just simply use xylene and, uh, you know, wipe it off. So this is actually a pretty ideal way to use this stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put some on the uh, tool itself. Then... I'm going to set the tool aside, and believe it or not, with contact cement, it's okay to let it dry. And typically, you want to put the contact cement on each item. You would want to put it on this, and then you'll also want it on the paper. And then as it dries, it just grabs it onto itself when you bring it together. If you put it on just the paper, it won't be as effective, or if you put it on just the, uh, you know, the... Uh, the, the steel piece, it won't be as effective as, as if you put it on both. Now, you could use a brush and probably do this a whole lot better. The problem is, is the contact cement, of course, will destroy the brush. So if you do use a brush, make sure it's a disposable brush. You don't want to use uh, anything that you don't want to throw, throw away after you're done. Same with epoxy. If you use a brush, it's, it, it has to be disposable. So I'm just going to use that toothpick. But anyway, if you just give it a second, and it doesn't take a whole lot of time for this stuff to dry, just kind of set it on where you want. Very quickly, it'll, it'll cure and be attached to that. I do need to let it dry a little bit. But here's one I made, a ten, one of the 10 millimeter ones. This is 800 wet or dry. So, so that's going to become very useful as I sand various little things. 
anyway it doesn't take a whole lot of time for this stuff to dry but as it dries you just come at it with a scalpel and cut the uh, cut along the stainless steel edge And there you go. Now I have a 800 grit sander ready to go. And that'll, that'll last me a while, you know, and then when it's time to replace it, I'll just pull it off and make another one. It doesn't take any time at all. Anyway, these are some of the coolest things that I've recently picked up. I'm very excited to try these. So uh, if you're looking for a neat tool to grab, grab a couple sets of these and then you can set them up with different, different grade, grits of sandpaper. This is set, set at 800 and this is set at 2000. So I have a a rough a rough sander and a finishing tool um anyway i highly recommend these things they they're they're really cool anyway that's all i got for now um hopefully uh the next video i'll have that rudder fixed and we'll uh, actually have a better look at my mustang but uh who knows who knows what other problems are going to show up all right thanks for watching bye